back. Um, so it's been a while since we've done a, a video series for a project we're doing because obviously COVID has got in the way. Um, we've also had a baby, so that's added a bit of time onto things. Um, but yeah, we're back and this is our biggest project today. We are so excited to show you. This video is gonna show you the walk round um, of it before and build is coming tomorrow. So yeah, the before pictures will be in this video. Um, we're also gonna talk you through what we've done to get to this point because we've had to go to planning, um, which has taken a while um, and we've had you know other things we've needed to overcome with that. Uh, but yeah, we are turning it in from a 14 bedroom guest house here in Hawley, Surrey, to an 18 bedroom HMO split into three lots of six and a one bedroom flat. So yeah, like I said, it's our biggest project today and we are really excited. Um, so yeah, let's get on with the video. <laughs> more detail about the project I thought I would let those of you that haven't met us before know a little bit about us so we have been in property for seven years now um, in that time we've done 16 projects most of which are HMOs um, and we've done a like, variety of deals our biggest HMO was an eight bed um, property which we obviously had to go to planning for um, and yeah we've done various other things you know exchanges of late completion all that sort of stuff 
Um, we've also grown our lettings business, which obviously manages all the properties that we've refurbed, but also has external clients. So we've got, I think it's around 100 rooms under management and a few by to lets as well. I think it's like six by to lets, five or six by to lets under management as well. Okay, sorry, we had to stop filming there abruptly. Um, so we're back on a different day and now I've got a plan. How do we find the deal? So nothing really clever. It was on with an estate agent. We'd actually gone to see another property with this estate agent and they suggested going to see this one. Uh, the vendor was the person that did the viewings. Obviously normally it's the estate agent, uh, but having the viewing with the, with the vendor meant that we got to find out a bit about him, why he was selling, his sort of story, all that sort of stuff. And it turns out we got along with him very well. And we're actually both very similar in our thinking and what we're trying to achieve. And yeah, we worked out that there was an opportunity here to structure the deal creatively, whereby we have exchanged on the property. We are then doing the building works and then completing on the purchase after building works are done. Therefore, the the property is then, the, the I suppose the business is then up and running, has got a proven track record to then be able to purchase it much easier because the banks can then see that, yes, it's a working property. Um, and it also means that in the interim, we've saved on all of the finance costs that would otherwise be needed during this time where the property is not making money through the build. We worked with an independent planning consultant to come up with a design that would best utilise the potential of the property whilst maintaining its current character. Uh, given that it's in the conservation area, we also had to work with a heritage officer to make sure that the new design didn't jar with the existing aesthetic. So we ended up with a design whereby we added an extra floor into the attic and essentially we've ended up with three six bedroom HMOs, one on each floor and a one bedroom flat on the ground floor. But it's a little bit more, ex bleh, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So I will show you it in more detail over the plans. Okay, so on screen at the moment is the existing ground floor plan and the existing first floor plan. So as you can see, this is the main entrance and had the guest dining here and the guest kitchen and then guest rooms across here and pretty much all of this side is the owner's quarters although this bedroom was actually used as a guest bedroom and then coming upstairs you've got the rest of the bedrooms so here 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 all across along like this and the plant room or linen room as they call it um which has got the washing machines and all of the oilers and water tanks and whatnot. Okay, so now on screen we've got the existing ground floor and the proposed ground floor. So as you can see, we have HMO1, which is made up of this area here. And we've got the one bedroom flat, which is made up of this area here. So I'll talk you through the one bedroom flat first. So this is mainly the owner's quarters are here. So we are taking out the chimney stack and moving this, this wall further this way to create a bigger living kitchen space and a smaller bedroom um, here. It's actually a bit bigger than what is on here because we've shifted it a little bit. I think nine and a half square meters is a little bit small for bedrooms. So we've moved that wall a little bit. Um, and then here we've got the bathroom and here we're gonna have a utility space as well. So then HMO1 is made up of the existing bedrooms, which is here, so bedroom one, two, three, four here and then the dining space creates a further two bedrooms so here and here now the communal kitchen turns into the ensuite for this bedroom the off suite for this bedroom and the corridor for this bedroom to get through to the to the HMO because its door originally is here but we are closing this off and so HMO one will be accessed from here so that's six bedrooms on this floor for the HMO and then the old owner's kitchen and sort of lounge area turns into the communal space for HMO ones. So that's the kitchen, the dining space and lounge space. Okay, now up to the first floor. So we have the existing first floor plan and the proposed first floor plan. So the first floor is made up of one six bed HMO, which is HMO two and part of HMO3, but HMO3 goes up to the top floor, so it's only two rooms for HMO3. So I'll start with HMO2. So you come up the stairs um, from the main entrance, and here will be a front door for HMO2. So it'll only be able to be accessed from for those tenants that live in HMO2, and it's made up of one, two, three, four, 
five, six bedrooms. And then this was a bedroom and this was a bedroom, but we're turning that into the kitchen and lounge area for uh, this particular HMO. So it doesn't show it on this plan, but this um, chimney stack is coming out, as I said, downstairs as well. Um, and then the kitchen, again, some of these bits on the plans are slightly different only because when we walked through with the builder, something sort of came to light that we had to kind of amend. So this entrance will go in through here and not this door here. So it's kind of two rooms, but linked to two rooms. And again, the laundry room is then out here in the hallway. So we can get rid of all the laundry and whatnot over here. So yeah, as you can see in HMO2, we, we're not actually doing an awful lot in terms of structural work, apart from taking out this chimney and moving this door. But essentially the bedrooms stay as they are. We're not changing any layouts or taking walls up or down or anything like that, uh, only in this. So we're hoping that HMO2 will be up and running fairly quickly. So lastly, the other thing with HMO2 is that they've got this, what is the fire exit here, but essentially it means that they've got direct access to the communal garden so although they're on the first floor they've actually got a, a door to the garden which is nice okay and finally hmo3 so hmo3 we're not actually building at the moment because well mainly because of material prices and also trying to get this project over the line in the deadline you know by the deadline um actually we've sort of scaled the build back so we will do this this bit in the future maybe in the next couple of years or so but essentially these two rooms at the front will become part of HMO3. So I'll just put HMO3's um, upstairs plans on just now. Right, so on screen now, I've got the proposed first floor plan and the proposed second floor plan, just so I can show you what makes up HMO3 because it's across two floors. So as I said, um, these two rooms become part of HMO3 and you would walk up the stairs, turn left and this is the front door to HMO3. Um, again, slight amendment to the plan. This is actually a going to be a bedroom and this is going to be the kitchen. So excuse that for not being quite correct there. But essentially we have one bedroom on this level, the communal kitchen, and then you would go up stairs that go above the existing stairs up into the attic and we come into this lovely space here. So up here, there's a further five bedrooms. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five bedrooms. We've got, um, they've all got their own, own en suites, but these two have got their sort of off suites, if you like. We have a laundry room for them. So again, we're getting rid of the, the laundry appliances, washing machines, tumble dryers up here. And we have a lovely, great big living room here as well and a roof terrace. So they have their own outdoor space. They're obviously more than welcome to go and use the communal garden, but bearing in mind they're on the top floor, it's also nice to have a bit of open space on the same living level. But yeah, essentially that's the plans. I know it's probably a bit difficult to follow over a screen, but if anyone's got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Just pop them in the comments below. Picking our builders for this project. So we're very lucky having done 16 projects, we've got two really great sets of builders. And it was a close call between the two of them, but we picked the ones that we did for a couple of reasons. One, so our slightly smaller team, we actually use for our own house and they did a great job and they would have done a great job with Villa Verde there as well. However, because we have two sets, we would like to work with both of them and we can't give all the work to one team and not the other because obviously you need to keep the relationship going. Uh, so that was one consideration. The other consideration is the team that we went with is a slightly bigger team and we just know, you know, what with COVID and all that sort of stuff, that things can wipe out a team like COVID. Um, and a bigger team where they've got lots of trades that are not necessarily coming into contact with each other because they're working on different sites and things meant that if one person comes down with something then it doesn't necessarily spread to everyone else and someone else can kind of fill in the gaps of someone being off and bearing in mind we're working towards a deadline with this uh, to be able to complete the purchase not only complete the build uh, that was quite a big consideration for us which you know to sort of mitigate any risk of kind of over stretching or over um, going over that kind of deadline. So yeah, they both have been great, but we've gone with the company, the building team that we have and they've been great. And yeah, we're very, very happy to be working with them on this project. So that concludes this video. I hope you found it interesting. Make sure to like and subscribe and thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Wow.